Hello YouTube, Gamer Dad here. Uh, this is video number 31 in our 2D Space Shooter tutorial series in XNA. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous video, uh, kind of my welcome uh, back video, um, we're going to be doing some changes uh, to what we have here. As far as I know, I didn't watch the whole series over again, but uh, as far as I know, this is the project. Um, well, I know it's the project, but I don't think I've made any changes uh, since we, we were working on the series five months ago. Um, it's pretty much the same uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, so you guys should be able, we should be able to just pick up right where we left off. Um, there's a few changes I want to make uh, first after looking over it again. Um, uh, one, uh, we're, we're just going to jump right in here because I know you guys are anxious. Uh, there's uh, one thing I had thought about is since we only have one player in our game, and we're probably always going to have one player in a game, at least in this tutorial series, um, it's, it's not really good common practice to make stuff global uh, from what I hear. Uh, as you guys know, I'm not like an avid coder, but you know I enjoy doing it on the side and uh, hope I can teach people something. But uh, I'm going to make our player class global, uh, just because then we can access it anywhere we want. Um, we're not going to have conflicts because it's the only player in the game anyways. Uh, so let's do that. Let's open up our player.cs. And uh, this is what we have so far. And it, it, sh it should be the same as what you guys are seeing uh, pretty much where we left off in video 29. Uh, so how we do that is uh, we're going to go into our main here and we're just going to say uh, public static player player. So we're just going to instantiate and make it, we're going to make it uh, global here by making it static. Uh, we're going to go down into our uh, constructor and we're just going to say player equals this. Okay, now, uh, in theory, we should be able to access this from anywhere. Let's just, for example, let's go into our explosion class and just go down in our update function somewhere. Just don't, don't worry about doing this. I'm just going to show you. We can, we can just say player dot player dot, and then we have access to all its uh, members here and functions and all that from any class we want without instantiating uh, um, an object of it within that class. So that's going to come in handy in the future videos uh, when we're trying to access health and other things after we do some changes. Okay, so uh, recap real quick. Uh, we're making our player class global just by going into the main here saying public static player and we're just going to call it player. And then in our constructor we're going to say player is this, which is this class. Okay, I'll save that off. Um, next change I wanted to make uh, is uh, in our last video in the 29, we were at the end there, I was trying to kind of do a reset. So when we die and uh, we go back to the main menu screen and we hit enter to play the game again, uh, certain things weren't clearing. So uh, we'll go into our game one real quick here. And uh, I'm gonna ex I have all these minimized because it's you know, they're pretty big now. I'm gonna, we're going to go into our update function and to our, um, let's see here. Uh, the game states here and in, in our state game over here uh, notice I added two things here. No, we cleared our enemy list so that uh, when we started the new game the enemies wouldn't just be starting right where they were when we quit the game last time or died uh, and same with the asteroid list but what I, we didn't do is I noticed in testing is uh, if we were shooting bullets and we died and we started the game over by hitting enter uh, our bullets would still be where they left off. So you have to do uh, p.bulletlist.clear, which will clear our player's bullet list, so they won't show up on the screen when we restart. And also, um, I was lucky enough to have an explosion halfway going off when I died. So when I started the game again, I saw it continue uh, right where it left off. So we'll want to clear our explosion list as well. So just uh, make sure to add these in, your, uh, in the state game over case. Uh, when we hit escape to reset the explosion list to clear it, and our bullet list to clear it as well. Okay, uh, so with those out of the way, uh, I we will start uh, the first, I'm sure this will be multiple videos here because we're going to be doing some major changes to our HUD class. Uh, one of them being, let's open up our player.cs, one of them being is we handle um, our health texture within our, our bullet class, or I mean our player class, which displays our health to the screen. And like I mentioned before, open up the HUD, we want to kind of handle everything that uh, displays on the screen within our HUD class. So that when, which we will be implementing in this uh, next couple of videos, is the show HUD option, 
where we can uh, use tab to to toggle it on and off. And uh, if we have our, our health bar being worked in our player class, then when we toggle, uh, I also did this in testing, when we toggle the HUD on and off, the player bar still shows up, the health bar. So we're going to remove that from the player class and add it to our HUD. So what we need to do is we can remove our health texture from our play. We're in our player.cs. Um, and we'll just add it to our HUD. So that'll be a, we'll add it here. Public texture 2D. Um, it'll be health texture. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Also in our player, um, we're going to change our, our health bar position. We don't need that in our uh, player.cs anymore. We're going to delete that, put that in our heart, in our HUD. Uh, vector 2, health bar position. Okay, and then our, uh, back to our player 1. Now notice here, um, it's, it's going to be saying, hey, there's no more health bar uh, position here. So we're, we can just cut that from our player class, go into the constructor for our HUD, and add it in there. So we're going to be setting the health bar position within our HUD. Okay, back into our player.cs. Same here uh, in the low content. There's no more health texture in our player class, so we need to remove that from our player class, add it to the load content in our HUD. Back to our player. Uh, we're not going to be drawing it in our player class anymore. So in our draw function in our player class, go ahead and cut that. Back to the HUDs draw function. So And we're going to put it under here, so we need to add some squigglies here. Because it's more than one. And we're going to say, spread batch draw our, and we didn't change our health rectangle as well, so it's going to be like that for now. Uh, we'll go up in here. Uh, we'll remove our public rectangle, we call it health rectangle from our player class and add it over here. So we'll add a public rectangle. Call it health rectangle. And that should go away. Go back into our player CS. Uh, in the update function, we're setting our rectangle for our health bar. We can cut that as well. Go back into our HUD, into our update, and add that in there. And let's see, is there anything else that references our health bar? No, there isn't. So if we save, build this, let's see. Okay, we need to add health bar width and health bar height uh, from our player class too. So take those ints out of your player class. You just cut them, add them to your HUD, add them there, add the comma. Uh, we're going to also need to set those um, health bar height and health bar width. We're going to have to define them here in the constructor. So go to your constructor. We made the height 25. We'll just cut it, add it to our HUD. Cut the health bar width. And add it to there too as well. Also, we need to transfer our health variable over. So we can cut that as well. And another int. Move that comma. And health. Then we'll need to set our health too, which is uh, in our player. We don't want to cut this in here though. Uh, well, let's see here. Actually we don't want to remove that from the player class. So we're going to put that back in because we need we need our health for our player. We'll keep that in there. And then go back to the HUD and we'll just say our health, since we know it's 200 in the player um, in the player class, we'll just say 200 here. Okay. So, recap. We removed all the things that have to do with our, our player's health bar from our player class and we placed them in the HUD screen so that all the stuff we display on the screen is handled within the HUD. 
All right, so now we can save, build, make sure uh, nothing's wrong here, and see if our health bar still displays. Enter, and it does. So we go into the player.cs. And because in our game one, or in our uh, HUD, we're saying um, our health bar position, we have that set, we have our width and our height, uh, and our draw, and we're showing the HUD, we're saying sprite branch draw, our health texture, health rectangle, white. Let's see what we have these set at. Health rectangle equals new, health bar position dot X, and let's see. Health bar position equals 50-50. And why isn't it loading it? Let's see here. Health bar, we have it. All right, give me one second, guys, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so the problem was is uh, I thought that before we were updating the HUD in the game ones uh, in the play playing state, uh, but we weren't because I guess we really never had to uh, based on uh, what we had in here. So uh, in the HUD, uh, one thing I forgot as well, um, just make sure in your HUD constructor to set uh, the health texture to null uh, just because it's good practice. Uh, so we have, we're loading the content for our health bar. Uh, we got the health rectangle here and here's what we need to change. Uh, and this is why we made the player class global. So uh, basically, if we're setting the health bar width in the HUD to 200, it's just always going to stay 200. Um, but what we want to do is reference the player's health throughout the game. So if he gets hit by a bullet, uh, his health bar will go down. So uh, we can just delete this health bar width within our HUD class. And instead of saying um, down here, the health bar width, we want to get the player's health. So we're going to say player.player.health. And then we can keep the health bar height because that's static. It's always going to say 25 high. Okay. And then uh, next we want to go into our game one. And in our update, uh, we want to go to our playing state. And uh, down here where we're updating um, the, the enemy, right below that, let's update the HUD as well. So HUD dot update game time. Okay. So now if we save that off, build. We should see our health bar, uh, which isn't being controlled within the player class anymore, but within the HUD. And there it is. Let's see if we can take the damage. Uh, let's see. Game over. We hit escape. Uh, brings us back to our main menu like we had uh, before. And uh, there shouldn't be any more bullets on the screen. Notice when I died, there was bullets. Uh, they should be all gone. We should be completely reset when we head on her. And there we go. So uh, I'm going to stop here at this part. Um, and the next video will continue um, working with our HUD class. And we're going to start on adding um, the cool, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, the cool sliding in and out alerts when you hit certain... Uh, score landmarks. Uh, I did add the graphics for those to uh, the um, to the zip file that I put in the comments of every video. Uh, so if you're at this point you'll want to re-download that and it has our, uh, our uh, um, scores uh, images within there. Uh, so you'll want to re-download that like I said and uh, we'll go from there. Next video we'll continue with that and uh, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video um, Hit like if you want to watch more or when I post some more updates, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.